Welcome to the home studios of Dave Carroll. He is Canada's storytelling troubadour from United Breaks Guitars fame. A story, one story, that completely altered the course of your entire life, your business, your brand, everything imaginable, Dave. And I know you get asked all the time uh, to recount the events of what happened, which is well known. It was a, it was a real internet and, and one of the great YouTube videos of all time. But tell us a little bit about, you know, ten years ago or a mm. decade or so ago, the perspective. That's what I think everyone would like to know: is the perspective a decade gives you on how one story can change a life. Well, this is the 10th anniversary for United Breaks Guitars, so it's it's literally been 10 years now, and uh, it did change my life instantly. I had been a singer-songwriter with my brother Don and Sons of Maxwell for 20 years at the time, and when I had a bad airline experience with United, uh, they didn't want to fix the problem, so I had heard about this thing called YouTube, and I thought, why don't I make uh, three songs and videos about my experience, thinking I might need three to make an impact, and uh, I promised United that I would try and get a million hits in the next mm -hmm. year with all three videos combined. So the first one was called United Breaks Guitars and it had a $150 budget and my friends and I came together at the Waverly Fire Hall just up the road from here and we got together on a sunny June day in 2009 and we shot this uh, video with really no second takes and no real master plan. It was just let's go shoot some ideas. Kind of like how we're doing it right now. Right off the fly. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, and then we had a really good day, and it was a, a lot of fun. We laughed the whole day, and, and uh, it was a really positive experience that way. But when I finally saw the video, I realized it had some some uh, meat to it. I thought, mm -hmm. this could actually be attractive to people. Yeah, did you know when you uploaded it to YouTube that it had a chance to, uh, you know, go, as they say, viral? I didn't even know what the term was, at, at, at okay. viral, but I thought... Uh, a million seemed like a big number. I had three videos to try and get to that number and I thought the first thing you have to do, I'm a big believer in content mm -hmm. and, and uh, the cream rises to the top. So if you have something that looks and sounds good and makes people want to tell their friends about it, then to me that seemed like a good recipe to try and get some mm -hmm. traction in social media. And so I was happy with what the, the way the video looked and I just posted it and I sent it out to uh, people in, on Facebook and on Outlook Express in two messages and that's the last two times I've ever asked anybody to watch it and it went viral. I found out what viral was the next day almost Okay. and it started to go up exponentially and that's the term of a viral. Can you bring us to that moment? United Breaks Guitars is going through the roof. The hit counts are just going crazy. Yeah. Bring us to the moment where you and your your wife realized, Jill, that oh my goodness life's never going to be the same. It was the very uh, Basically, the, the morning when I realized it was going viral was the day after uh, I put it up. Mm -hmm. So I went, uh, I was up in New Glasgow with my brother Don, and we had a gig playing to Fire Chiefs. And I didn't have a smartphone at the time, just a regular cell phone. So I couldn't watch the count going up, but I knew it had gone up thousands that day. And I got off stage uh, from our gig, and I got a message from the LA Times, and they wanted to do this interview that they'd heard about from the Chronicle Herald newspaper in, here in Halifax. And uh, the next morning at 6 a.m., I got a call. Jill and I were in bed, and it was a C100 radio. Okay. And it's like, Dave Carroll at C100, we want to talk about United Breaks Guitars, you're on the air. <laughs> and Jill and I uh, laid in bed, and I, I was lying down giving my first interview about United Breaks Guitars, and, and it was off to the races from there. The emails were coming in, the phone started ringing, and, and it never really stopped. And that launched a speaking career. You, got, you, you wound up writing a best-selling book. Ten years later, when someone who's watching this and they wonder how their story, whatever their story might be, how could it change and dramatically alter the course of their, you know, their career, their life? What would, what would you tell them? Well, I was a 20-year musician uh, trying to, to write things that people might find interesting, get a hit song on the radio. I had that, that aspiration like anybody else, but I've never cared less about the outcome of anything I've ever written. And, more than with United Breaks Guitars. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried my best to make sure it looked good and sounded good and all of that stuff, but I never cared less about an outcome. And it's funny that the most successful thing I've ever done right. happened when I cared l uh, less about the outcome. And, and I know you speak to a lot of audiences, Dave, about, you know, unpacking maybe what are the three biggest lessons that are most relevant? Because we both know 
there's a lot of people out there trying to create content, trying to make a name for themselves in social media. What would be the, the three sort of insights that that whole experience has given you 10 years later? Uh, it goes back to my songwriting roots, I think. Uh, songwriters don't try and write a song just for one person. Even if it is one person that they're writing it for, they try and cast a wide net. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I think worked for United Breaks Guitars. I wrote a song that anybody could appreciate. I didn't, uh, I didn't use profanity or come across as angry and vengeful. And I think having that mindset allowed mothers who have three-year-old kids watch all the videos and mm -hmm. learn the language. There are people that were literally 100 years old that liked the song, and then there's business people that did. So I made the song accessible uh, to as many people as possible and didn't presume that I knew exactly who my target audience was. Okay. That was a big difference. That was. There's something else, and, and we chatted just a little bit about this before our camera started rolling, but I, I've long observed that people have this thing, uh, this challenge called the knowing doing gap. Mm -hmm. You know you should do something, and you knew, geez, I gotta do something. I, I, I'm getting the runaround from United Airlines, their customer service, they broke my guitar. I had, I got this idea, okay, I'm gonna do a, a video and write a song, and there's my customer service complaint. Yep. But it could be anything. People know all the time that, Dave, they should do this, or they wanna do that, or they got an idea to start their own business or stop doing something else. You actually closed the knowing doing gap. You took an idea and you executed on it. Right. I'd love to hear you share a little bit of your thoughts as you wrestled uh, through that experience uh, with the United Breaks Guitars. Well, when I was going through the customer service maze that we've all been through, I was as frustrated as anybody would be. And it wasn't until I said, I'm gonna do something different. Okay. And, and I had that knowing that uh, not on the outcome, but I had the knowing that it was the right thing to do. And I knew that because it felt right. I stopped being angry and vengeful the minute I started writing that song and I had nothing but fun with it when I shared it with my friends and there was this big community coming together uh, with my little micro group. Mm. And then we put it on, on the internet and the response to it was overwhelmingly positive. And uh, I just knew that it was the right thing to do. And when I had tried to go through the system, make the phone calls, mm -hmm. get told no, uh, that drives you crazy. And so when everybody gravitates towards what's common and what uh, what you're supposed to do, uh, you usually don't get great results. But I did what I thought uh, was right because it felt right. And I never looked back. It was the right thing. People have ideas all the time. They have an idea to do this. They have an idea to do that. You had an idea to write a song. What, may, what, what do you think was involved in your thought process to go through and actually pull the trigger and do it. Well, I was a songwriter. That's what, that's what I do. I, that's, and it's not just what I do, it's what I love to do. So I decided to respond you know, using tools and, uh, and expertise, if, if you, you don't mind saying that, uh, in something I like to do, mm -hmm. write songs. And so I thought, this is, this is how I identify myself, this is how I communicate best. And, uh, it, and if it doesn't go anywhere, if it failed, I still enjoyed the process. There was, there was no downside for me. This mm -hmm. was a, a win. Right but, but if I understand it correctly, you, you didn't wait until everything was perfect. No, and uh, I, yeah. that's been my career. I've never waited until I was a good enough guitar player to start being paid. Okay. I was a horrible guitar player in my first gig. Uh, there is everything wrong with that video in terms of artistic development and movie making and film. You know, uh, Professionals find everything wrong with that, but they also like it for uh, its shortcomings. And so it's got a campiness. And, uh, and I didn't wait because people were ready to accept something that they liked on YouTube. All you had to do was give, give them that. Mm. Yeah. And, and so you were telling me earlier though, you and your brother Don, who's also a musician, you've been doing that since your first song contest, not waiting until everything's perfect. No, we, uh, our first gig, we had to learn six songs. And the day that we were playing that first gig, we only knew three. So we had to learn three and we still didn't really know three those extra three, but we went and did it anyway, and uh, we got on stage and, and hoped that uh, everything would work out, and it did. And It wasn't and, perfect, but it worked out. But it worked. Yeah. And so, and I, and I know you're still doing that today. You're still just plowing through and trying things and experimenting things. What do you think holds people back uh, from not publishing, not posting, and, and not sharing what they're, you know, coming up with? 
Uh, I know this as a musician, I've seen it on the YouTube comments, there's always going to be somebody who doubts you and criticizes you, they're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And eventually you just have to decide, am I going to turn that off and I'm not going to pay attention to them. Uh, you, you have to create content, I think, that pleases yourself first, and then you tr your trusted advisors, mm -hmm. and then you just put it out there. And if it fails, the beauty today is that you're not mortgaging your house on a video. Right, so uh, I've got enough gear here that I can make videos for next to nothing. And if the if the first one or the first ten don't work, I'm in it for the long haul. And as long as it makes me happy to be doing it. And and I also know that looking forward to the future, you are launching a whole new series of of, of workshops combining music and storytelling. You call it compassionate storytelling. That's right. Just just. Speak to us a little bit about that, Dave, and, and what do you see as the future of compassion and storytelling? Well, I started off as a musician and a, and a songwriter and a storytelling songwriter. So I've been telling stories now for 30 years in song uh, with you United uh, in my speaking career. I approach it as a storyteller, and so I've developed uh, my own style, mm -hmm. and I've taken a real interest in how stories get told, how you identify what a story is, and how you communicate that. And uh, so I've decided that maybe I have something to share in that regard as well. So I'm open to uh, working with companies and organizations now to try and bring out their storytelling because all of us are storytellers. And the way that you stand out is through effective storytelling. And I learned that through the United thing because every musician who has ever played has had, uh, if that long enough, has had an airline break their guitar. So there's nothing outstanding about the fact that my guitar got broken. But somehow using the medium of YouTube mm -hmm. and maybe the music and the way that I did it without really thinking about it, my story ended up being the number one music video in the world for a month, right? And so uh, I've spent a lot of time going back and thinking, well, what did I do there that worked so good? And what didn't work there? How could that have worked better? And so I'm trying to help organizations realize that what does seem mundane and boring, there's gold in there, and I try and help them bring that out. Well, that, that's utterly fascinating. Speaking of fascinating, on Leaders and Legends, I'm throwing this question now at people just like you. If there are three legends off the cuff that just absolutely fascinate you, that have always fascinated you, who would those legends be? Uh, recently, I'm really fascinated by Elon Musk. Okay, uh, and and that may seem like a like a cop out because he's he's a lot of people's legends. But when you think about uh, the groundbreaking stuff that he's doing and what mm -hmm. he's done uh, in so many different directions at once, without being an expert, he's going to places that no one has gone before, and he's getting stuff done. Uh, I like to be like those people. Okay, uh, musicians wise, I've always liked people like James Taylor and people that have had 50, 60 year careers and they're still relevant and they're still bringing it. I'm not really into the people that have just had a hit album last year. I want to know, how, how have you stayed relevant for 10 and 20 years? And uh, so those type of people really interest me. Dave Carroll, uh, you are Canada's storytelling <laughs> troubadour. You do, uh, you do great work, I know, in your speaking career. He's helping people um, discover stories uh, that unite people and yeah. inspire movements. So thanks so much for doing this. Thanks a lot. Dave Carroll here on Leaders and Legends where you never know who you're going to meet or what you'll discover.